What's up, college football fans and Mean Green fans? Tanoi Valencia here once again with the Mean Green Show. Joined once again by Ryan, and we're going to recap this North Texas Temple game. But before we get into all that, guys, you already know the drill. If you're a fan of college football or G5 football, consider hitting that like and subscribe button because that is truly all that we talk about. Ryan, I appreciate uh, you jumping on and hope you've had a good week and just kind of jumping right into it. You know, starting off with the defense, what are you? What are your thoughts on uh, on the Mean Green? Well, I mean. You know, big win this week. Um, took care of business. Finally, finally got us one of those uh, blowout opponents, which I feel like we needed some confidence. Um, keeping uh, Temple from scoring second half, I think that's a big uh, plus defensively. Um, but I would say that uh, they gave up a lot of a lot of a lot of yards on the ground. So you know, I, I feel like we're still not taking away anybody's ground game. Uh, I don't want to beat them up today. I mean, I think they're doing the things they need to do to win uh, defensively, but I, I'm glad we got got the win, got the blowout win I feel like we needed to have. So that's my initial thoughts on it. Yeah, and again, I mean, on here, both of us, especially me, have been really hard on Capone. And yep. I, um, you know, I don't, I, I, you know, it just seems that they really, they rallied around him after the game, you know, just some of the highlights from from the, the football account and stuff, which is great. I'm, it's really happy to see. I mean, I'm glad that they and he had a lot of success in this game as far as the, the, the points go. And I'll get back to that, that in a second. But like like you alluded to, yeah, they did give up. Um, let's pull it up here really quick. 242 rushing yards on the ground uh, to a Temple team who is more pass heavy. And also want to point out the um, their starting quarterback who passed for like 474 yards, five touchdowns, and zero picks against UTSA the week prior was not playing, so they switched to Patterson, who's you know more of the uh, more of a a, a a running threat than a throwing right. threat. Right. And you know, but that could have played into North Texas, or it could have played into Temple's favor quite. You know, when it, maybe it kind of did statistically, but. Um, just that, that first drive, watching them drive down and, you know, run it. I don't know. They probably had 60 plus yards on that first yeah, drive. They actually had 80, you know, 80 yeah. yards on that first drive. And so I, I, out of their 267, 80 of that's on the ground, you know, or 347 total, 80 of that's the first, the first uh, drive. So, um, but hopefully that means we're adjusting, right? We're moving in an adjustment fashion that makes sense. So, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to beat up Capone and those guys. I feel like they're trying to make strides in the, in a certain direction. And uh, obviously, when we get against better opponents, um, it's going to be harder. But maybe this week's a confidence booster they needed. You know? Yeah. And like you said, they shut them out second half points wise. I mean, they kept them out of the end zone pretty much the whole game. And, you know, it was all in all. I mean, it was it was a pretty good showing by the defense, which is refreshing. Um, okay. So moving over to the offensive side of the ball, uh, what are your thoughts there? I mean, it's a banner day. I mean, we knew with Morris coming in, it was going to be an offense heavy, uh, situation, but a couple of things I was evaluating, you know, before the taping today as a team, we're the, we're the number one offense in the American right now. Um, so that's interesting to think about, um, you know, Rodgers has 12 touchdowns to one interception. Um, you know, the running backs are averaging eight yards a carry. Macklin was six for 163, two TDs, um, just having a, a stellar game and kind of established himself as, a you know, the wide receiver to stop in, in that conference. So I think, you know, that speaks volumes to what they're trying to do offensively. Now we have to go out and figure out the defensive side so that we can put it together. But, you know, we're three and three right now. I was at the Navy game. We're, we're one touchdown. We're three points away from winning that game. We're four and three. And we should have never lost the FIU game. So you've got two games that are out there. We could be having a conversation about being five and one. We talked about that briefly uh, before taping. And I think that, you know, that's a reality. Now, the next slate is not – exciting but like we've been saying uh, we outscore people maybe we have a shot yeah so 
you know, just kind of going over the statistics, Rodgers, 25 of 39, 307 passing yards, four touchdowns. Attaway rushes for 94 and a touchdown. Big game by Attaway. Uh, that's that's great to see. And uh, Isaiah Johnson as well, 70, 79 yards on 10 attempts, rushing, one touchdown. Yeah. Um, receivers, I mean, a lot of them had a lot of, you know, good, uh, you know, a lot of them had, there was a lot of spreading of the ball, I guess you could say. Uh, but obviously, Macklin having the, the huge day of six receptions, 163 yards with two touchdowns, and really a, a Bolitnikov type of day. So, so that that that's well, great. He's, he's tied for second in the nation in receiving right now. So you know, he's, and he and he has one TD in every game this year. He's a junior, so, I believe. Mm -hmm. You know, transferred to Missouri. Do you think uh, they they can hold on to him for? He next came from year? come from Missouri or Auburn? Missouri. He's a Missouri, Missouri? guy. Okay. Yeah, he was here last year. Okay, I got you. Um, yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I was talking to somebody about this uh, the other day. As a receiver, maybe you want to be here. I mean, the problem is the NIL money, right? Mm -hmm. North Texas is not going to bring as much NIL money as some of the other suitors might. Yeah. But he's definitely going to have statistics if he stays here. I mean, he, they've kind of proven that out, that if he's here, he's going to put up big numbers. And if that's going to get him seen, I, you know, I think some of the other guys left and went to other schools and aren't playing. They may have more money, but they're not playing. So it's it's more about what do you want? Do you want yeah. to play? Do you want to put up the numbers? Or do you want to get the money now on the NIL side? I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Kind of stay on NIL just for a quick second okay. here. I'm, I'm hoping to get Harry, who who runs the Goming Green on here. But yeah. uh, Goming Green has now an NIL collective up and running. And I believe they're more tailored to maybe the, average, the everyday North Texas fan as far as a $10 a month commitment or one-time gifts of $25, $45, whatever the case may be. Okay. Um, so again, I don't want to talk too much because I want to talk when he's on here. I want to ask him questions and stuff. Hope hopefully sooner than later. Um, but you know, it, it'll be interesting to see how that goes with with with. with I know Light the Tower is kind of going after bigger businesses, I believe. And um, you yeah, know, I'm so not I'm not really sure what Light the Tower is doing right now. They've kind of changed strategies here recently, so I don't know their their strategy today. Um, I think they originally tried to be a nonprofit, and that got. Um, the state said no way to that. So that kind of changed directives. Um, what I, what I would point out just global NIL for a minute, I think the way that um, I've seen some of the other schools, um, most specifically Oklahoma state doing it, you can go to their website, their athletic website, click into their roster. And it says, do you want to hire me? Here's my rates to do different things. And you can literally hire them on their website right now. And I think that is where this is going from a brand for it's the athletes brand is what they're selling. Now, not everybody has that, you know, but the, the people who are starting the, the starters, they all are out there saying, send me a message. If you want to hire me, here's my pricing. That's super cool. That's, that's I mean, pretty check it out. It's there. Yeah. I mean, you go to Oklahoma state's website. Yeah. I'm sure others have it. That's just the one I've seen. Um, and so I don't know what what organization they're using to do that, but it's very user friendly. You can click on there right now and be like, "Hey, I want you to come to my event, sign autographs, a hundred bucks, whatever it is." You know, it's very very much that way. Yeah. So as it sits right now, JD Davis, you know, he mm -hmm. he he uh, tweeted that out. The whole um, twelve TDs and one one interception. The you know here's the QBs that have that those stats: Bo Nix, Jordan Travis, Drew Alar, and Chandler Rogers. Um, with Rogers having, you know, starting probably at least let's see when did Rogers start? He's after? only been, he, yeah, he he missed two games. Yeah, on the starter side. Yeah, started so, started playing more midway through the third, I believe it was. Is yeah, that right. Or, yeah, yeah, I think so. So significantly less snaps than the others. Do you think Rogers is on pace? Well, obviously he might be on pace to do it, but do you think he's going to pass for over 30 touchdowns this year? Mm. That'd be a big ask. You know, I, we're, we're not, we have, we haven't seen great defenses. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know of any of the teams we played, any of them have a, a top tier defense. So, I think those numbers start waning when you start seeing some better defenses. Um, but I think he'll have an exceptional year. I mean, I think he'll, you know, I think he's in the mid twenties. Uh, I think 30 might be a stretch, but if he had extra games, if, if we, if we can get to a bowl, you can talk about that. But I, I think there's a 
tough that's a tough sled to get for us to have that happen this year yeah. so i'd say that's going to be a hard ask but um you know morris has got those boys moving the ball and i think at the end of the day it's exciting so like we've talked about multiple times you want to see some exciting football you can see it in north texas and they are moving it against big opponents too it's not just the doldrums of the AAC that we're talking about. I mean, they moved the ball on Cal. They moved the ball. They've moved the ball consistently well the whole season. Um, you know, defense hasn't stopped people, but moving the ball has been good. And I think since Rodgers came in, they've moved it that much better and and really held on to it more. They were moving it before, but then they'd have a pick or have a fumble or something and, you know, turn it over. Now they're holding on to it. So that's that's been nice to see. Yeah. So last last question before we we finish this thing off here. So I believe um, North Texas is a twenty point, maybe nineteen point underdog to to Lane. Okay. Do you do you? I, what are your thoughts on that spread? Do you think North Texas covers? Uh, realistically, do you think there's any shot of an upset against the defending uh, you know American champions? And I wouldn't. What, what, I wouldn't bet on the. I wouldn't bet on the upset. But I would bet on covering the spread because 20 points, you know, I think we can we can hang from a scoring perspective. You know, and I think it's going to be a high scoring affair, but I think we can put the ball in the end zone. So I'd like to see it be a closer spread than 20 points. Um, you know, that's my thoughts, at least. I've watched some of Tulane. I watched some of Memphis, the Tulane Memphis game. Um, you know, Tulane, Tulane seemed vulnerable in that first half of that game now they turned it on and kind of separated in the second half but um i yeah. think it'll be a good i think there'll be a lot of unt people in new orleans um because i think they're really pushing that you know being that we we were at the new orleans bowl four different times you know back in the day so i think a lot of people are trying to come out for that and relive some of those days so i'd like to see us have a good showing and at least cover that spread yeah, and I want to say it was at Tulane whenever Tulane played UAB close for a while. I think for mm-hmm. that a half, maybe UAB. I can't remember if UAB was leading at the half, but UAB was up there for a while, and it looked like it was going to be an upset. But obviously, Tulane turned on the Jets. But, um, but yeah, we'll see. It, it'll be it'll be interesting, but be a fun one. Yeah. Well, Ryan, as always, go Mean Green, and I appreciate you jumping on. You bet, go Mean Green.